Welcome to the University of Sussex Research Forum. We're going to be talking today about war and photography, since places of conflict are so present in our lives through media and other things. Um, I'm Maurice Howard from the History of Art Department, and I'm going to be talking today to my colleague Ben Burbridge. Ben, how would you say the coming of the photograph has changed the way in the long history of art we've looked at the representation of war? The simple answer is that photography provided an incredibly efficient and incredibly accurate way of representing scenes of conflict uh, in a manner that carried the status of factual documents. Um, this arguably liberated other media to pursue less naturalistic ends when it came to the representation of conflict. If it liberated other media, particularly painting and other forms, um, what's the situation now between photography and current art practice? In terms of the representation of conflict specifically, I think that the spaces of contemporary art offer the opportunity to engage critically with war photography. Um, this is an example from a recent project by the artists Adam Broomberg and Oliver Shannerin called War Primer 2. Uh, it uses images drawn from the web representing the war on terror and juxtaposes these with uh, an earlier publication produced by Bertolt Brecht that similarly tried to create or establish a critical relationship between photojournalistic representations of conflict and, and the viewer of his work. Would I be right in saying that the photograph is uh, a particularly instantaneous way of representing war? Um, I think the issue of instantaneity has particularly particular currency at the moment if one thinks about uh, the speed and the ease with which uh, images uh, can make it from a digital device and onto the internet. Um, this is part of a wider culture of, of kind of rapid acceleration and, uh, and kind of consumption of images. If one thinks about rolling 24-hour newscasts, uh, broadcasts, sorry, uh, shown in real time. Uh, the potential consequence of this is, is arguably rather worrying uh, in that we are presented with a stream of effects, a stream of incidents that arguably closes out the space for a critical understanding of cause. I see. Um, would I be right also in thinking that the war photographer has been that landed with a particular responsibility for what's happening in conflict situations. Absolutely. I mean, there's a long tradition of, of considering war photographers as these kind of heroic characters who enter uh, the, these very dangerous situations to come back with images that shape our kind of collective understanding uh, and, and mould uh, popular opinion. Uh, this was subject to damning critique in the 1970s and 1980s, where particular writers began to take issue with war photography as producing a voyeuristic spectacle, as having a very callousing effect, uh, as involving uh, unequal power relations, in recent years, we've witnessed another effort to rethink this by restoring agency to the subjects and to the viewers of war photography uh, through promoting more uh, compassionate, uh, more empathetic, more understanding forms of engagement with representations of conflict. Thank you. And thank you very much, Ben, for talking to us today.